a site older than the famous Stonehenge and even the Great Pyramids of Giza by over 6,000 years. Some claim that it is the site of the Garden of Eden, where God placed the two original humans, Adam and Eve. This place is called Gobekli Tepe, and it would seem that ancient people carved and arranged these massive stones 11,000 years ago, long before the invention of metal tools or pottery. Just a short distance from Urfa, a historic city in southeastern Turkey, an extraordinary archaeological find has emerged. That could change our understanding of early human history. The Hadians and Hurrians frequently appear in discussions about early human history in Turkey. Yet, neither the Hadians nor the Hurrians are believed to be the architects behind Gebekli Tepe. Theories suggesting the builders were probably part of a lost Pleistocene civilization or even extraterrestrials. When German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt began excavating the site in 1993, he was struck by the uniqueness of the structures he uncovered. Schmidt unearthed over 20 circular stone enclosures, with the largest measuring 20 meters across. At the heart of these enclosures were two carefully carved pillars standing 5.5 meters tall. These pillars featured eerie, stylized human figures adorned with folded hands and fox pelt belts weighing up to 10 tons each. Some pillars were left blank, while others showcased elaborate carvings of foxes, lions, scorpions, and vultures, adding an even greater complexity to the site's actual purpose. Carving and erecting the massive stone structures at Gobekli Tepe must have posed a massive technical challenge, especially for people who hadn't yet domesticated animals or invented pottery, let alone metal tools. These structures, dated to be at least 11,000 years old, stand as humanity's oldest known monumental creations, designed not for shelter, but for some other purpose. Even when it was rediscovered in 1994, Gobekli Tepe remained a pristine archaeological site. Despite centuries of agricultural use, the area had never undergone deep plowing, largely because it was quite inaccessible for heavy machinery. This preservation allowed for numerous surface finds, including sculptures and fragments, pointing to an early Neolithic age of the site. Gobekli Tepe meaning Potbelly Hill, perfectly captures the site's unique appearance. A large hill adorned with a captivating pattern of mounds and hollows on a flat limestone plateau. This mound isn't just any hill, it's packed with megalithic stone structures and other intriguing buildings, all crafted by early hunter-gatherer communities during the Neolithic era. Gobekli Tepe's position in this landscape suggests it was a key player in a broader network of early Neolithic sites. Located on top of the plateau, it stands visible from afar, offering great views of the surrounding plains. Beyond its beauty, the site's ecological richness likely influenced its selection. Right at the northern edge of the Fertile Crescent, Gobekli Tepe's surroundings teeming with diverse wild plant species including ancestors of today's domestic staples like einkorn, emmer, and barley. The monumental structures at Gobekli Tepe are nothing short of extraordinary, both in size and significance. As the earliest known examples of their kind, these buildings hint at a ceremonial purpose, likely linked to public rituals, perhaps even funerary rites, and grand feasts. Surprisingly, evidence of domestic buildings or settlement use at the site remains minimal. Take the first building, for instance. It shows signs of alteration, while others, although near the surface, exhibit the distinct circular enclosures characteristic of the third layer. Another building reveals a cleared enclosure with only the floor and two bedrock cut pedestals remaining visible. Among these structures, one stands out as the largest and best preserved. This enclosure features two massive central pillars encircled by 11 similarly shaped pillars. The central pillars, 
towering at 5.5 meters and weighing around 8 metric tons, rest on mere 20 centimeter high pedestals. These pedestals and the floor are meticulously carved from smoothed bedrock, with one adorned with a duck relief frieze. What is truly captivating is the anthropomorphic nature of these T-shaped pillars. The elongated T-heads appear as abstract representations of human heads, with the narrower side resembling a face. Arms and hands are clearly depicted resting above the abdomen, while belts and loincloths shaped like animal skins further emphasize their human-like form. In essence, these T-shaped pillars could be seen as pillar statues, adding another layer of intrigue to Gobekli Tepe's mystery. The mystery surrounding the abandonment and burial of Gobekli Tepe continues to intrigue researchers and historians alike. Several theories attempt to explain this, ranging from war and displacement to environmental challenges like drought, famine, or disease. Another possibility is that the site simply lost its cultural or religious significance over time. Interestingly, the deliberate burial of the site presents its own set of questions. Hilltops typically erode rather than accumulate sediment, making natural burial unlikely. This suggests that the monuments at Gobekli Tepe were intentionally buried. In the absence of written records, experts can only speculate on the reasons behind this deliberate burial. It's possible that the site was buried to preserve it for future generations. Or, if new beliefs or cultures deemed the site sacrilegious or taboo, it might have been intentionally concealed or memory hold, as some theories suggest. If Gobekli Tepe served as a religious sanctuary, its burial could have been part of a process to desanctify the area. This practice is observed in many cultures where sacred objects or places are ritually altered or destroyed when they lose their divine significance. In some Christian traditions, for instance, the altar of a church slated for closure undergoes a ritual to desanctify it, ensuring it is not accidentally used inappropriately. Similarly, Gobekli Tepe's burial might have been a deliberate act to alter its sacred status, leaving researchers to try to uncover the beliefs and practices that led to its abandonment. After a decade of careful excavation, archaeologists made a groundbreaking discovery. The stone tools and artifacts found at the site revealed that these circular enclosures were crafted by hunter-gatherers living off the land as humans had done before the last ice age. The tens of thousands of wild animal bones unearthed, coupled with the absence of domesticated grains or plants, paint a picture of a gathering of hunter-gatherers converging at Gobekli Tepe 11,500 years ago. Using stone tools, they were able to carve out the T-shaped pillars from the limestone bedrock beneath their feet. Carving and transporting the massive pillars of Gobekli Tepe would have been quite difficult, but it might not have been as challenging as it appears. The pillars were crafted from the hill's natural limestone bedrock, a material soft enough to be shaped with the flint or wooden tools available at the time, given the right skill and patience. The horizontal layers of limestone, ranging from 0.6 in Itzers to 1.5 being per thick, allowed ancient builders to trim the pillars from the sides rather than from below. Once carved, these pillars were moved a few hundred meters across the hilltop using ropes, log beams, and sheer manpower. Archaeologists once believed that small nomadic groups from various regions converged at Gobekli Tepe for periodic building projects and grand feasts before dispersing once again. The site was thought to be a ritual center, possibly associated with burial or death cult practices rather than a permanent settlement. This interpretation challenged long-held beliefs in archaeology. Traditionally, complex rituals and organized religion were considered developments 
that arose only after societies began domesticating crops and animals, a shift known as the Neolithic Revolution. The prevailing view was that once societies had a surplus of food, they could allocate additional resources to building monuments and conducting rituals. However, Gobekli Tepe's discovery suggests that organized rituals and monumental construction may have preceded the Neolithic Revolution. With this, we can say that Gobekli Tepe has clearly disrupted our entire understanding of early human history. Stone tools and radiocarbon dating place the site firmly in the pre-Neolithic era, challenging the usual known timeline. Even after 25 years of excavation, there's still no evidence of domesticated plants or animals at the site. It's been described as a cathedral on a hill, a testament to its one-of-a-kind architecture. Now, when Klaus Schmidt published his initial findings on Gobekli Tepe, the world of Neolithic archaeology was shaken. Yet, the site maintained an air of mystery, with excavation areas shielded by makeshift steel roofs and rugged dirt roads leading to the mountaintop dig site. Schmidt's insights into the site's iconic T-pillars and distinctive round special buildings captivated both colleagues and journalists in the mid-2000s. Media outlets worldwide hailed Gobekli Tepe as the cradle of religion, with Germany's Der Spiegel likening the lush grasslands surrounding the site to the Garden of Eden. This newfound fame turned Gobekli Tepe into a global attraction. Within a decade, the once isolated hilltop was bustling with visitors from around the world. However, the civil war in nearby Syria in 2012 disrupted tourism, slowing down excavation efforts as curious tourists flocked to see what some deemed the world's first temple, making it challenging to walk the site's narrow paths with wheelbarrows. The discoveries at Gobekli Tepe have ignited global interest in the Neolithic transition. Recent findings, along with a closer examination of earlier excavations, are challenging Klaus Schmidt's initial interpretations of the site. Under the guidance of Schmidt's successor, Lee Clare, archaeologists dug keyhole trenches deeper than ever before, reaching the site's bedrock several meters below the large building's floors. This deeper excavation revealed surprising evidence, suggesting Gobekli Tepe was not just an isolated ceremonial site, but a village with special buildings at its core. The excavations revealed houses and signs of year-round settlement, indicating a more complex and dynamic community than previously thought. In addition to this, a large cistern and channels for rainwater collection were discovered, and these are important for sustaining life on the arid mountaintop. Even thousands of grinding tools have been found to suggest the processing of grain for cooking and brewing. Moreover, Turkish archaeologists exploring the rugged countryside near Urfa have identified over a dozen other hilltop sites with similar, albeit smaller, T-pillars dating from the same period. One particular example is Karahan Tepe, which is often referred to as its sister site due to its shared characteristics and proximity to the other. While Karahan Tepe was initially discovered in 1997, it wasn't until 2000 that the first systematic survey took place. This study unveiled basin-like pools carved into the bedrock, along with a wealth of artifacts such as chisels, adzes, beads, stone pot fragments, grindstones, and pestles. The discovery of arrowheads, scrapers, perforators, blades, and other stone tools made from flint or obsidian suggests a lifestyle centered around hunting, gathering, or animal husbandry, contrasting with most Neolithic settlements focused on agriculture. Dating to the pre-pottery Neolithic period, 2500-6500 BC, Karahan Tepe aligns closely with Gobekli Tepe's timeline. Subsequent studies have indicated similarities between Karahan Tepe and the Gobekli Tepe II layer. Both sites feature 266 pillars adorned with T-shaped architectural elements and intricate animal reliefs depicting snakes, 
insects, birds, and various animal parts. Circular homes and ceremonial structures cut into the bedrock further enrich the ritual landscape of Karahan Tepe. There's actually a rock cut chamber at the site that showcases 11 giant phalluses and a snake-bodied figure, emphasizing human representations more prominently than the diverse animal depictions at Gobekli Tepe. We must point out that Karahan Tepe is not an isolated sibling to Gobekli Tepe, but part of a larger network of contemporaneous settlements spanning over 100 kilometers. This includes Karahan Tepe and at least 11 other yet to be excavated sites, showing the broader cultural and ritual landscape of the region during this. Contrary to the long held belief that Gobekli Tepe was a monumental project marking the transition to farming, Claire and fellow researchers now view it as a last stand by hunter-gatherers adapting to a rapidly changing world. Evidence from these nearby sites suggests that while some communities were experimenting with domestication, others were preserving their traditional lifestyles. We can see these clues in the intricate stone carvings at the site. Depictions of foxes, leopards, serpents, and vultures adorning the pillars and walls of Gobekli Tepe are not merely decorative, they tell stories. These stories likely played a role in maintaining group bonding and forging a shared identity in the community. This constant air of mystery around Gobekli Tepe continues to draw thousands of visitors despite being relatively unknown just over 25 years ago. As researchers, keep working to get to the bottom of its origins. Each new finding pushes us closer to figuring out exactly why this ancient site was built and its role in the bigger picture of human civilization. But what do you think? Will we ever be able to find Gobekli Tepe's actual origins? Or are we simply chasing the wind here? Share your thoughts with us. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to our channel for more discoveries.